Welcome to The Point of View. This is your favorite current affairs show on television here on CTTV. The Point of View, we get the right guests, ask them relevant questions on issues that matter to you. We're live tonight with what you could say, the man of the moment. He's been all over 150 billboards across the country with a big, big, big announcement, the unveiling and the unmasking of the man who's captured the attention of Ghanaians. We're talking about who he is, what he wants to do, and why he's become so prominent in the past few days. Stay with us. Welcome back. So the point of view is live tonight. And we're happy to take your questions because I'm sure a few of you are wondering, why the mask? Why the new force? What happened to the convention? Was Malema actually coming? What is his economic plan? He says you create uh, thousands of entrepreneurs. What does he mean by that? He has very interesting things. He says he keeps an Afro hair as well. Nana Kwame Bediako is my guest, known as Cheddar, also known as Freedom Jacob Caesar. <laughs> tonight, all three are in the studio tonight. <laughs> Welcome to the show. <laughs> thank you, thank you. How man. are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Happy New Year. Great to see you. Great to Keeping see you. Keeping the too. Afro too. Well, I mean, if I did say if your hair is not falling off, you have to show off. <laughs> you right? have to show off. <laughs> So is Nana Kwame the same as Cheddar? Is it the same as Freedom, Jacob Caesar, or they are three different people? I think they're three different people. Okay. And um, Nana Kwame Bidiako is more the corporate guy. Okay. You know, who is more interested in investment and development. Mm -hmm. um, Cheddar is just the street, a nickname that means money. You know, in what language? Oh, it's uh, in the rap industry. Cheddar is money. Okay. You know, most people think cheddar is cheese, but cheese is cheddar. So okay. that's how it's misunderstood. That's how it's actually uh, interpreted in, in, in the rap industry. And, right. and also K-Y-E-D-D-A-R still represent uh, cheddar as okay. money, as a seashell. Okay. And then who is Freedom Jacob Caesar? Freedom Jacob Caesar, that is very enigmatic. <laughs> you know, it's right. a character that I created and even rechristened myself to be that person, you know. Um, and it's royal, mm. it's empowerment, you know, it's a character that, you know, has a particular style of mm. presenting themselves, but also, you know, like are a leader of a movement, you know, introducing mm. Africa to the world. Mm. You know, and I thought that Africa needed that. You know, Africa needed someone from Africa that goes out there mm. to the Western and portray Africa as royalty. So Nana Kwame is the businessman. Cheddar is the entertainment sort of lifestyle thing. I wouldn't say entertainment. It's just like the youth. You know, I connect with the youth. Really with Cheddar. Cheddar. And then Freedom Jacob Caesar is your royal. Yeah. Are you from the royal family? I am not, but I feel like God has ordained me and put the crown on me. So for me, my royal family, it's like, uh, like my spiritual part. You know, like so God has ordained you to be what? Oh, to be the prince of Africa. The prince of Africa? Africa, the continent. So who is the king of Africa? Well, that's God, right? <laughs> so you are the prince of Africa. The prince. The, the whole continent. I claim it. And what's your mandate? Well, I feel like, you know, when it comes to Freedom Jacob Caesar, they should be able to inspire a lot of youth. You know, people in Africa have always been trying to express themselves mm. in terms of their fashion sense, you know, the freedom of fashion, the freedom of doing many things, mm -hmm. but they are restricted. You know, some people are still living with their mother and father and they're 28 years old and they wanted to express themselves, but mm -hmm. they couldn't. So that character just... I build that character so people can be inspired. People will want to be. But I've also realized that some people don't like the character. Mm -hmm. They feel like, okay, it's too much. Or, you know, okay. uh, you get some people who are jealous. But that's normal, you know. Uh, but the main idea is to be able to inspire people okay. with that character. So you're, you're a businessman who wants to liberate Africa. Is that, if I wanted a sentence to describe you, what, what are you? Well, for the business side, you cannot use business alone to liberate Africa. Okay. You know, you need great sense of leadership. Okay. Okay. Uh, business is just people trying to build riches and wealth. All right. Okay. But leadership is when you want to build nations. Okay. And then add value to a country, you mm. know, development, uh, building nations and developing countries or communities. And, and, and that's the sort of leadership that I feel like I mm. also have that skills as well, mm -hmm. uh, apart from the business itself. So what's your leadership track record? I don't know if it's clearly 
been demonstrated to the people. Mm. But, you know, I started from just giving, which you can see from some of my mm. um, uh, foundation, uh, mm -hmm. like New Africa Foundation. You know, we have managed to merge, you know, the Christians and the Muslims to have a better relationship. You know, we mm -hmm. realize that communities have separated us. You know, you go to Nima and it's just uh, Muslims and then you go yeah. to some part and it's just yeah. Christians and it's like we can't merge. So my relationship with uh, Chief Imam, mm -hmm. when I went to him, it wasn't about going to give them goods like, okay, I've come to also present something to you. But it was for me to ask him how best. Mm -hmm. you know, we can bring this sort of young people together so we don't separate ourselves. And, you know, he liked the idea. He supported it, you know. And then from then, I started also going to the neighborhoods like Nima, Newtown, and all of these people. And I already had friends there and people who knew about me. So, you know, some of the things, some of the leadership skills have started from there. Uh, going to neighborhoods and giving them food from you know, deaf to blind people. So mainly philanthropy, giving, yeah. giving. Yeah, you, you, when you give, you start to get a sense of responsibility. You know, after giving, keep giving. You know, people would automatically assume, for instance, there are people that have been paying their fees, they automatically call my finance department as if that I'm obliged to do it. You know, mm. they don't ask me, please, can you pay my fees anymore? They just yeah. call when the time is up that you have to pay. So then it's up to you to say, okay, I don't want to pay anymore. Mm. Or it's up to you to understand that you've taken that responsibility upon yourself. And no matter what you have to do to do it, mm. you do it. Because sometimes responsibility is also the gateway for us to maintain our wealth and so, our success. So if I get you right, your, your main leadership track record is in your philanthropic work. It started from do. there. It started from there. But then you also get to realize that when you're managing your workers, I pay 300 workers every month. Okay? In which companies? Um, in maybe four of my companies under the group. What's the name of the group? Qualys Group. K W A R L E Y Z. Yes. yes, yes. So they have, you have 300 employees. Yes, about 300. This is people who are doing construction, people who are, who are in the hotel operations. You know, it's it's quite a lot of um, people to deal with, to handle. But of course, some so what of are the companies under the Qualys Group? Uh, it's Petronia. Petronia. Yeah. Is that a Petronia city? Yes. The yeah. thing that came on CNN? Yes. Are you building the Petronia city? Well, I, I'm still on the basic infrastructure. And when I say basic infrastructure, you're talking about doing the roads, gutters, and all of this. Now, we'll talk about that later. But just I'll come back to that. So yeah. Petronia city is one. Which other uh, one is Wonder that? World. Wonder World oh. is a developer. Okay. And we develop all the buildings you're seeing, number one, Qualys, mm -hmm. and... Um, you have New Africa Construction. So New Africa Construction is the contractors. Now, here's what happened in the beginning when I started my group. It was very difficult mm. for a local Ghanaian mm. to go out there, get funding for some of these things, and mm. then after the contractor to do it and all of that. So what I did was I decided to build a group that I would contract myself. So the developer is Wonder World. We give the contract to New Africa. And then we build it according to our pace and our time. So there's Petronia City, Wonder World, New Africa Construction, and then, and then there's Belfast, which is city management and property management. And then there is the New Africa Foundation. Which is the CSO side. So how do you, which of them raises money? For? Well, Wonder World, Wonder World was the one that had the ability to sell. So Wonder World is the one that raises the finance. The development. So what our specialty is investment and development. So this is a port that you build that you can actually create an economy of scale and still build an economy around that scale. Okay, so investment is first of all, maybe you buy a land, for instance, and then the land becomes like a land banking if you have two or three. In two years, maybe the land can appreciate maybe 40%. You can sell the land mm. and then you use the capital okay. to go into construction. So once you sell the land, instead of going to give that money mm -hmm. to a contractor outside, you yeah. give it to a contractor inside, which means the money is now circulating under the group. Within the same group? Yeah. So who are your principal sources of finance? Do you use debt or equity? I use more equity, a little debt. So who are equity partners? Well, equity partners has come from mainly our land banking and our property stock. So the development that we do is just like what everybody is doing now. They start the property business and they put it on the market. No, my, my question is like, when you say land banking, like you need money to build a house. Yeah. Who's your equity partner? Who's giving you the money? Is it a bank? Is it a, a, a rich person somewhere? Is it oh, a, no, an no, investment no. We, partner? Is we, it a, 
a fund from... No, no, no. no. We've, who, had, who, we've had banks. We've had one bank that has lent us money before, which I mentioned the last time, IFC from the World Bank. So that's well, debt, not equity, because that's lending you yes, money. Yes, but, but then they didn't lend us the money for the whole building. They gave us a part of it. So did they own part of the building? No, because... You, that's so it was loan. debt? Yeah, it was debt. I see. So who are your equity partners? Equity partners, you mean that the owner, the stake of it? Yes. We are. So you don't, you don't share the building with anybody? No. If so we, the building is fully yours? If we have the land, and then we have a bit of capital to develop, and the bank comes in with that loan, the only stake holding that is in there is the bank. Uh, so the original capital is yours? Yes. Oh, okay, I, I was thinking maybe somebody would give you some of the money, and then they, is, they own a percentage of the building. It is not easy like that okay. in, in Africa. And I'm sure you know this by now, mm. that even if we went to the white people's world and we told them that we have such a fantastic idea or business here, that if we build hotels or if we build some agriculture platform, we can turn over a lot of money. They're not going to carry the money and give you. That is outside. When you right. come inside, you have a lot of banks in Ghana, mm. from student loans to business um, mm advancement, whatever mm. that you ask for these banks, they don't have the money for you. And I'm sure we all know this, okay? We don't have banks supporting us even if we wanted to high purchase a car, mm. if we had a job. So you don't borrow from Ghanaian banks? I haven't before. You've never tried? I tried, but they wouldn't, they wouldn't give me. They wouldn't give you? No, one, you I, I remember very well, there was no one, Ghanaian one bank. bank I, I, please, let me mm. just, mm. <laughs> there was one bank I remember very well. Mm. They took me through a process you know, took my building documents. At that time, I was running Qualys. You know, mm. I don't want to mention the name of the bank yeah. because it would be too obvious. But I did everything and passed all the boxes they ticked, you know, gave them all the requirements. And when it got to give me the, giving me the money, right. they never gave me the money. And uh, I right. think it took about maybe two years for me to hear that the, the bank has been dissolved by the... So it's, it's the IFC that actually gave you money? Yeah. Yeah. And at that time, it's because I had even a partner with me doing that project, that particular project. So IFC invested in the, but you've paid back the IFC? Yes, we have paid back. When was this? Oh, I think it's this year. Wow. It's this year, and you see, my partner had to come in and support. Mm. You know, it's difficult for, for Africans to, to benefit from such financial institutions because I don't think they believe in our capacity. And I also don't think that they believe in the governance mm. that builds the economy around the country. So it would be in their interest if they were coming mm. to invest in like a gold mine and they have to have a multinational company. So that if, can if Nana Kwame Bedia come with four companies under his group mm -hmm. with this very well-known uh, projects cannot get funding from a Ghanaian bank, what is the hope for a young Ghanaian entrepreneur to get a loan from a bank? Currently, there's no hope. That's why we're here. So how, will you, how do you intend to change that? There is fear instead of hope. Now, the only thing stronger than fear is hope. And somebody has to give it. Now, how do I intend to change that? From what we've been discussing so far, you should just know that I have a template. Okay. I have a template, and that template, I want to give it away for free. I want people to understand that mm. they can start any business from a very small scale mm. and start to build the capital. And when they build capital, they shouldn't build capital for the capital to be consumed by problems that will come along. They should build capital to reimburse the capital as an investment, okay, through any sort of development. It can just be a simple mm. uh, technological uh, software, you know. So, just, so how did you build the capital? Well, you, build, you have to build your capital. And I think it's a great question that you're asking me. The question is, does the average Ghanaian understand how to build capital? You know, people think that when you have money, you need to find things that will consume the money so you pay for it. Mm. That is spending and purchasing. Now, there's a difference in spending and purchasing when you compare these two to investment. Investment takes the money away from you, and you have to nurture it. You have to water it. It's just mm. like planting a seed. You know, you have, to, you have to water the seed till it grows before you can harvest it. Mm. It's the same thing with your investment. When you can buy a land, Maybe you just need to put a wall around it and fence it and put a nice gate. And then somebody will come in and say, what are you doing? I'm doing a development. What sort of development? I'm going to build eight houses here. Maybe you don't have 20000 or 50000 to even start the project. But someone might have an interest in just the way you ward the land and put the gate. You know, you're giving them a sense of security and a sense of construction.
that person can trust you and give you fifty thousand dollars or a hundred thousand dollars for a building this could be the beginning of you so who gave you your first big break because um, most people who are successful when you ask them they'll tell you the story around the first business they did made a friend or family somebody lent them some money and they turn it around how did you because you have a lot of properties you seem to be very wealthy where did you get your first capital from so my first capital was from the two houses I built on one land now I bought the land before I would go into real estate I mm. rented a nightclub and then in three weeks people had come from London this was the beginning of 2002 that's when I was introducing lifestyle in Ghana at that time there was nothing like the year of return mm. I started this in 2002 you can go back in the records and check the club was called temptations and I invited people from Holland London and America and that's because I didn't want to stay in Ghana alone I had just come from London and the place that I rented my capital at that time was 20,000 my main capital that I had made in mm. London from telecommunication and scraps I had invested in Hawaii it was a million pounds and the money I brought to Ghana is what I did the club with. But when I did the club, I made $75,000. And that $75,000 is what I used. Oh, so you brought money from London? $20,000. $20,000. Pounds. Pounds. And that's what I invested in renting the space and doing a nightclub, inviting people, you know. 20,000 pounds yes. in 2002. 2002. Well, I thought you were supposed I to came, be. I came in 2001, but 20, 2002 is when I did the club. But you're supposed to be in school because I know you went to Accra, Accra. You went to a palm and then you went to U UK. You went to you went to study. Yeah, in the but UK. why would I be in school when I came? So from you England? were working in the UK. I was working for myself. So the first twenty thousand pounds you made, you brought it to Ghana. It's not the first twenty thousand pounds I made. The first money I made in England altogether was a million. How but old were you? But when I was twenty-one. You were twenty-one. Yes. You made a million pounds. Yes. In London. Yes. Working for which company? I was working for myself. My company was GT, Global Telecommunications and Utilities, wow. and I was selling scraps. So it's not you were like working for yourself. Yes. In London. Yes. And you made a million dollars. Yes, I age had twenty one. Yes. I had my own office in Walthamstow. Wow. And, and I had two employees. So I've been responsible for people for a long time. A million dollars. Yeah. A pounds. Million pounds. Pounds. In two thousand and one. Yes. That's incredible. That's well, people should really follow my track record because you know, I started investment at a very young age and what happens when you invest in things the money goes away so you feel like you're broke again it makes you more hungry you know to work harder but know? why real estate because we know your brother is in petroleum I, why I real estate i chanced it that's what i'm trying to tell you okay. the nightclub yeah when i did the nightclub and received the seventy five thousand dollars yeah it was cities that i was changing into dollars because i learned right from the beginning in ghana that you need to keep your money in dollars because the city was depreciating all the time all right okay so i did that and then after someone came to buy the club for hundred and fifty thousand dollars what was the name of the club Oh, it was uh, Matador before, but the club that I opened was called Temptation. So Temptation, I used to go, where is this? In Osu, that's where Citizen Coffee is today. Oh, Coffee, so, oh, I see. Okay, so I don't want to mention names, but, yeah. you know, and so when they had, they bought that from me, yeah. and I had the profit of 75000 I realized that I made 75000 from the club and 75000 from selling the building. Wow. And I had to decide which one I wanted to do, whether it's, do I go doing club? Or do I go trading in buildings? So I checked the many nights of boxes of money. I had to drive home, and the next mm. day I had to go and change it. And this one was just one check. So I went with this. So that's how I go into real estate. Then I went to rent the next building, arrange the same nightclub, and use it to buy it again. Made profit before right. I entered into building my own properties. And and your brother is in petroleum. Yeah, he's been in petroleum for a long That's time. That's Kweku Bediako. Kweku, He's yeah. older than you. Oh, much, much older. M much older. Yeah. Does he yeah. invest in your business? No. My brother... Are you business partners? No. No. I think that, you know, my lifestyle is very different from my brother. He's very modest. Very <laughs> cool in his corner. You know, I'm very vibrant. You know, I'm like, you know... Did and you go to the same schools? No. Where did he go to school? He went to Motown, at Chimoto Secondary School. One to Upper Six. No, I think he, he went to Kwabotri after. You know. And you went to Akraka and Apam? Yes. Did you work together in London? No, my brother never lived you in never London. never lived in London? No, 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 no. So which of you has more money? Oh, please. I would never want to look at that. But I think my brother is extremely successful. I respect his wealth. And he motivates me, you know. So that's Chase Petroleum? Yeah, Chase Petroleum. He yes, he motivates me. I feel like, you know, 
Ghana, Ghanaians feel like we should be in competition. People should be in competition. Yeah. No, I don't believe in competition. So yeah, there's just two of you. Oh no. How many are you? Uh, my mother is Qualis. I'm sure you heard her name. So the uh, building in airport Qualis is after name after your yes, mother. Yes, 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 yes. Now Qualis is that her name? Quali. Quali. Let's call her Quali. Yeah. So my, how many are you? Oh, my, me, my brother, I have other brothers, and I have sisters. You know, I have a big family. I have a big family to at least get me 2% vote in Ghana. <laughs> <laughs> Enough. And is that, are they mostly in Kumasi or Accra? Oh, no. we mostly in Accra, but I do have some siblings in Kumasi. There's a question young people want me to ask you. Sure. You're a real estate mogul, Wonder World, Petronia City, New Africa Construction, Belfast City. Housing is very difficult. Um, rent is tough. And there's no affordable housing for Ghanaians. You say you are the Prince of Africa and you say you want to help young people. Why don't you, why haven't you invested in affordable housing for young people? If somebody from the university wants a one bedroom house to live in Nkaswa, he can't afford your buildings. Good question, very good question. So in our plan for Wonder World, we first of all have a solid um, development that we want to introduce to universities is called graduators. Anyone that graduates from university, we want to be the first people that would give them the loan to even buy an apartment. Mm -hmm. And we don't want any profit on that. So that is a charitable cause. But let's answer your question mm -hmm. about low income uh, or affordable homes. Here's the problem with Ghana. Ghana is developing affordable homes and they say it's affordable homes, but they're charging people sixty to $80,000, first of all. And mm -hmm. then this development is not integrated. Mm -hmm. There is no integration in the development. So let's say you build 1,500 units for people to buy for 60000 and they manage to get you the 60000 This person might be working in commercial bank or some entity mm -hmm. or maybe, let's say, B5 uh, factory. Mm -hmm. And these buildings could be somewhere in Prapram. And then they have to drive all the way or take a car mm -hmm. all the way to Tema to attend this job, which is maybe 22 kilometers, and then 22 kilometers back. So in a day, they spend money to travel 44 kilometers, mm -hmm. okay? Now, they also lose three to four hours of their day mm. in doing this. Now, within eight years, they would have spent almost the money they bought the house with. Mm. So we have an affordable homes without integration doesn't make it work. And if you're going to put integration in affordable home, then you have to create the basic infrastructure. The basic infrastructure of sewage, planning, internet, wiring, electric, all of this costs a lot of money. People think affordable homes is cheap. Like I can just use five million to build for people. It's not gonna work, man. It's not going to work because without the integration, you need like a factory somewhere there. You need like a mass. A, a, a mat somewhere here. You need a hospital somewhere there. All of that within a four kilometer vicinity. And if you're not able to do that, you don't have. So you're saying until you put the, the structures in place, affordable housing cannot work. It's not you, just the building. It's not just the building. So it is that something you plan to do? Of course, of course. But it needs, it just doesn't need, you know, a basic capital. So when you go to like England, okay, all of these places like Manchester, Liverpool, it all started with affordable housing, but it kind of had some uh, integration of, of some kind of factory and things that people were so working. So just to be clear, the things you've said you are doing mm -hmm. so far are not affordable housing yet. No. You are, but you are saying you intend to do it. Of course, of course. And I have to do it right. I have to do it with an integration. That's what I'm trying to say to you. And that who's doing the integration? Integration, you do it yourself as a developer. Now, let me explain it to you. This is very t great town planning that we're actually not even doing in Ghana. So, for instance, you're going to Osup, and then the municipals are going to let, you know, um, um, let's say people encroach the place. Mm. And then you have all of these uh, squatters mm. coming from different places. You, so you start to lose the value of the place because you need to know that if Osu Road is going to be a Rodeo Road, mm. if it's going to be full of malls, if it's going to be this, so you can drive the human traffic there. Mm -hmm. And that turns over every day. Uh, people are making mm -hmm. money. So they cherish the road, they protect it. And then the value of that can create other people to have buildings and apartments around it so they can just walk to work you know they save mm. a lot of money that way and then things happen within that circle we'll, we'll talk about that when we come back plus the mask we've been talking about the man we'll talk about the mask and the message when we come back so i'm sure you've seen the billboards 150 of them in all 16 regions nana kwami bediaku is gunning for the presidency he's also saying he's the prince of africa which means that his message is beyond the country we'll talk about the abortive event that had four of the 
big, big speakers from Africa, what happened with that event as well, and whether there will be another attempt, all of that and more. Stay with us. Welcome back. This is The Point of View. We're talking to Anna Kwame Bediaku, known as Cheddar, known as Freedom Jacob Caesar. And we know that his foundation was behind the attempt to organize this big music speaking event, which was later canceled because of venue challenges. He had some great speakers, Pielo Lumumba. We were told there was also going to be Malema from South Africa there. Peter Obi as well was supposed to be there. And of course, the lady from Zimbabwe. They addressed the press conference. We're not happy with the cancellation. Some say that the cancellation has given you and the movement more publicity than the event itself i think you're right you know i i was praying and i fast in the beginning of every month for every year for one month and i asked that oh god please let this event be successful and then when they canceled it i said god but i thought you said you make it successful and then the question said god asked me again is i thought you wanted a successful event so i i think the successful event has been based on the cancellation you know, it actually went into all parts of Africa. It woke people up. What, what was the reason? Why did Ghanaians have to do that? They wanted to know if it was UN or if it's ECOWAS that had stepped in. You know, a lot of people had different reasons. We still don't know uh, all the reasons why the thing is trending around Africa. How many people would have attended the event? Because I'm told 30, the place 30,000. Yeah, and I did all that in 10 days. And this was free? Free, yeah. So there was music by Wiala, Stoneboy. Yeah. And then there was going to be these. Why did you select and these four? NFIA. Why did you select these four guys? So these four, two of them are activists. The other two are politicians that have, you know, a history in decades for trying to change the narrative of politics. But uh, like Peter Obi, for instance, had a sensational uh, polling uh, uh, campaign. results, yeah. Yeah, campaign in history with Nigeria just last year. Uh, Julius Malema has been going back to back for two decades and has managed to now stand on his feet and prove to the people that what he's saying it's positive and they believe in him and he, he's, he has a lot of potential. PLO Mumumba, uh, Lumumba is someone that has been talking over and over how Africa should be governed and how our leaders should actually invest in, in the people so value becomes something that is... Um, it's a sensational thing that comes back to, to, to donations anyway. And then you have Dr. Arikana, who was actually the ambassador for AU to America. But then, you know, because he didn't like what they were doing and their principles, he, she quit the job and stood on her feet. So these two are like activists that cannot be bought. Some say that the event was supposed to be then, after the speeches, she would launch... The, the new force was that the plan can you explain what you were trying to do with the event well first of all we genuinely wanted to bring these people to open the mindsets of the youth of africa and i knew that i was still coming as the man in the mask but i wanted people to know when they found out later about new africa foundation the contribution that we bring into the system into the youth into the people they see how important it is because this event was really going to impact people based on what they say. People were going to go home and feel like, look, we really had an hour day, and, and it was a national thing. Besides that, we were giving 5,000 pairs of shoes. That was coming from us as well. You were giving you know? out for free? Yeah, for free. We were feeding almost 12,000 people. On the night? Food. Yes. We had 40,000 bottles of water and Lamborghini something something energy drink, you know, so... Energy so, drink? Yeah, yeah. For what? Lamborghini is called Lamborghini, but it was given to us. I mean, so they were going to give to people to drink. Yeah. Whilst they were listening to this. Of course, they needed energy. There was music playing, and there was, was it a whole a night speech. event? Oh, I think we anticipated to do it within five hours. You know, so from like five, we were looking to close around. You know, we thought that the speeches would start around maybe seven, and by eleven, twelve, everybody goes home. I see. So this was the plan, and then you would then unveil the the new no, force. No, it wasn't the plan. I think that is because whoever or whatever entity that decided to cancel the event, they needed an excuse. But even if it was so, would mm. it have been wrong mm. for me to unveil my movement? No, it's not but a crime. There was a, there was a claim that these people did not know that you were going to use this to unveil the new force movement because they knew they were coming under the foundation. What value do you think I would have gotten mm. by unveiling the new force when I had to promote this whole thing as a convention. 
what value do you think? Mm. How would my new force have to supersede this intention mm. of trying to bring four great leaders from four different parts of Africa mm. to inspire and to motivate people? What difference do you think if I had to come on the stage and unveil myself and say, I'm the new force, the leader? What difference do you think I was going to make compared to these people performing? So, were you going to speak on the night yourself? Well, if you, you are the final speaker. No, if they, if they wanted to introduce me, which they did in the press conference, because they realized the investment, the time, the people that we had put together to make this happen, and they saw the strength behind the event. Because they are also speakers, and I think they've been into other uh, countries to speak. You know, but it's, it was the first time I had brought four people with this sort of caliber in, in, in one country. And I thought that in the right place, which was the first week of the year and the first Sunday yeah. falling on the 7th and using the Independence Square to send a message yeah. to Ghana and Africans, we thought it was very But you think you've achieved your aim because the cancellation has brought more popularity to the movement? I don't think it's just the cancellation that has helped me to achieve my aim. But I also think that the fact that they all had to agree with us to go and do a, a press, press conference. conference to explain ourselves, right. yeah. you know, actually send, you know, the mm. right, um, the right message yeah. to the people. And what happened was when I was at a press conference, I didn't even think that I was supposed to be part of the press conference because, you know, as you saw it, the three of them started to speak because it was the three that was available. Julius Malema couldn't make it because they wouldn't give him a landing yeah. permit. He was joining yeah. on our thing. But they called me. You know, they acknowledged me. They called me. And then I also gave my little speech. But okay. after my little speech, Dr. Eric Connor mentioned the fact that people were sending messages to her saying that they came here for a political something, 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 something. That's when I decided to unveil. There was initially a comment attributed to you that you were not interested in becoming president, and this was just like a movement you were doing. Just clarify no, no, that. Did I didn't, you, did you I say, didn't that? say that. What did I didn't, you say? I didn't mean it that way that I'm not interested to become a president. I said I'm not interested in the pres people's presidential position. As in, you know, they, they're making we look like we're so politicized. We don't even have a political party. Okay? I, I'm told you have applied for a party. I did, but they for, for the past three months. They, they didn't give us, but we are still moving with our movement. But you satisfied the requirements? Yes, we. Well, they have to tell us because. You, so in 2024 December, are you running? Are you going to be on the? I am running now, Ben. As as a as a party or independent? Independent. That's the movement. That's what we just. So said. the name of them. So you are running as independent presidential aspirant at this point because they didn't give us any any licenses or even provisional so license. why do you want to be president why do i want to be president great question now i'm going to have to tell you why i want to be president first of all i think that the new force is standing for the youth in this country and we believe that in the past four decades the youth had to have the right to be a part of the decision how and who is going to lead us and how they are supposed to lead us. We have to be able to be a part of. But I've also realized that in the past four decades, I've been looking between MPP and NDC, there hasn't been any young person who have stood up with the courage to say that I am coming in and I'm going to become the unifier. That's what I am. I'm the unifier between the youth and the government. And I'm asking the, the unifier youth between the youth and the government. And the government, yes. And the youth could be part of my whole new force. Sorry, now, the youth and the current government, or the youth the government and the in government, general. so as in the youth are not in government. Well, what, what position do you think the youth play in the government? What position can you ask Ghana that any youth in this country have a say? So you're going country? to be, so just to be clear, you're going to be a president who will lead a government of young people. Well, I'm going to be a president who will give the opportunity to young people, first of all, to be a part of the decision of how this country are choosing leaders. And so we want to eradicate and get rid of people going to the same youth and giving them money instead just to vote. And after that, there is no development, there are no job creation, there is mm. nothing. So this whole thing mm. is circulating around people's interest in becoming a president. And that's what I said I'm not interested in. I'm interested in making that change, changing the narrative mm. of how. But don't forget, you told done. me that when I asked you what your leadership track record was, mm. the first thing you said was philanthropy, giving people things. Yes. So how different is your giving from the giving the politicians give people for votes? 
Well, because you also give people, you share food, you share well, there rice. Is, there is a big things. difference in giving and bribery or corruption, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, when Jesus was with some of the people, maybe mm -hmm. uh, he could have given them something to buy something. But when the Judas guy took just whatever money mm -hmm. to point at Jesus, they did not say that he, he's been giving money, okay? They said that he's betrayed and that's mm. the difference. I think that's what we don't understand. Now, let me break this down properly for you so you can get a clearer mm -hmm. picture. Now, if you look at the Western democracy, yeah. when leaders arise and they want to become presidents, they simply go to the same public, whether it's the youth or the elders, and they ask them that, support me, donate to me. And the people give them a dollar, $5, $10 to support the agenda and the campaign. So now when they become president, they now own the people who have supported them. So they want to do something in return. You mean they owe them? Yeah, they owe them. Okay? Now when you come to... Which Africa, country are you referring to? Almost every country. Really? Whether, whether it's America do or... You know, do you know the companies that donated to Trump's campaign or Obama's campaign? Well, I'm not... I'm not Large companies donate. And they, they, the political parties in the Western world also get donations from interest groups. It's not just... Well, crowdfunding. Well, I'm saying that they can get that. Whether they're giving it to them for bribery is a different thing. What we're talking about is donation here. Now, when you come to Africa, the difference is that the leaders go to the people and say, take this money and vote for me. You take this money and vote for me. And when that person obviously becomes president, now you owe him. <laughs> he has to take what he's giving you. These narratives have to be reversed. So you are going to raise money from the people? Of course. But the youth are the ones you say don't have money. So are you going to get no, money No, no, no. You? you see? Or who, who is, who, which people look, are going to raise money from? Look at the history of Peter Obi's story in, 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 in Nigeria. Some people were broke, but they used their last money to print posters to support him. You know, they, they believed in his vision. And it's very rare to let people But believe. he didn't win. He didn't win, but you also know that there was whatever, okay? There was, now, there was what? <laughs> Well, I mean, you saw it yourself. I mean, the, the I, court has cleared the president. Of course, if you're a president. So have you identified any young people who will be in your government? I think the young people are the new force. Have, you, gro so, have you groomed any young person? No, no, no. Wait, Is there I, any young person you, you tip to work with you? Oh, well, there are many. Give, there me, are many. Give, me, give me like two or three of them. There are many, and I, I, I can't mention particular names, but I just want you to know there are many young people. There are young people who have come to me and have given me even ideas, the ideas that is working now even as part of our campaign. There are young people who are supporting us with the little that they have and helping us to campaign. There are young people who are coming. They are yet to even understand that we're here and we're standing for them. So what will be the new forces? So that's another movement, right? Yeah. What will be your, your main priority? When you, be, when you Like your main policy? I think it's to build a middle-income nation. To build a middle-income nation. Yes. So right now we have a box economy. Okay. What do you mean by middle-income nation? A middle-income nation is when you start from the regions and you start creating all sort of jobs based on the minerals that are attributable resources, reserves in those areas, creating that and creating jobs for them so they don't cross all the way to Accra. Right now, the entire nation is coming to Accra. They're looking for jobs in Accra. They think Accra is the place to find jobs. The Accra, Accra is choked, so when they get to Accra and they have an opportunity to travel, they all go. But, but Ghana is already a middle-income country. Ghana How so? Middle, Ghana has been a middle-income country since at least 2016. How so? Based on, the, based, on, based on categorizations of the World Bank, there are least developed countries, there are middle-income countries, and there are OECD countries. Ghana is a low middle-income country oh, already. Oh, so you're, we are going to stand here and talk about the World Bank uh, analyzation that the same World Bank is what are looking at us go to IMF to take three billion to sustain a country that you call a middle-income economy country how did you put these maps together I want to ask you this question because yeah, I know you know a lot about hold on, hold on. economics the I IFC gave you money they also have World Bank Yo, no no fine forget so, them so giving you money IFC gives you money is all wrong why should, why, why no, should no, IMF no, give no, 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 money no, no. Be wrong? I want you to answer my question what's the question it's not that they gave them money they went to beg to save the economy. But you are sitting in front of me, yeah. and I know you know a lot about economics, yeah. and you're telling me that this country is a middle income. No. Wait, 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 please, 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 please. It's a middle income. So I want you to give me your facts. How then do we go so broke that we lost all the cuffs in our central bank that we needed to go to, uh, sorry, IMF, 
to save us. No, you said you uh, wanted to make Ghana... Where is the middle income no, here? You said you want to make Ghana a low middle income country. I didn't say low. A please, middle, a I middle think middle you're country. contradicting yourself. Fine. Low, 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 low. Ghana low, low, low. is already a middle income Ghana country. Ghana is already a low income nation. A low income nation. And that's what I think you Ghana should... Ghana is a middle income nation. No, well, I've... I Based have, on the definition of the, the standard definition. Okay, please. I have given you my proof. I would like you to prove to me how do you call this a middle income nation when we're going to IMF to beg them to give us 600 million so we can support the so, entire country. So, so, no, no so answer my understand. question. I don't want you to jump. Okay, so what's the question? Because I've been answering your question. Yeah, so so let's your, be what's, fair. What's your question? My question is if you are calling us a middle income nation, yeah. then if we're a middle income nation, it means that we have the coffers in our accounts. We have the money. It's already yeah. sustaining yeah. in the economy. So there is yeah. money going in yeah. circles. Yeah. So if that money is going in circles, then how come they're saying that we don't have anything in the bank so we are going to IMF to save an economy? If this is what you call a middle, uh, <laughs> middle income economy, I'm so sorry. I don't know where so you, you learned this you from. You disagree with I that. completely well, disagree it's not, it's with not you, my ben. creation. There are many things I agree with you. I um, it's not my creation. So are you saying that you will not go to the IMF? Well, listen, you know what? As a country, we shouldn't depend on outside financial institutions for us to build our economy. Now, let me break this down. But do you know that China, do you know that, do you know that the IMF helped China become can, what it is today? I, can, now, I'm asking you a question. Oh, no, you're asking me a question. I'm answering, but you're ac jumping I'm to another you, question. I'm asking you a part two. Okay. okay. Because you're so, saying that, so which one do you want me to answer first? Uh, you're saying, I'm asking you whether you think ben, Ghana should go to the IMF. Don't worry. I will answer all the two questions, please. Yes. You have failed with one question that I'm very disappointed <laughs> in that, that you call Ghana a middle income economy and you it don't is. even understand what a middle income is. No, I do. But, but, but now, I do. I do. But now I let's do. go back to your China and your yeah. all of this. Mm. You see, China going to IMF yeah. is nothing for China because China is a country that has trillions of GDP as the economy, yeah. first of all. Mm -hmm. And they have global power in production and manufacturing. They are exporting to almost every part of the world mm -hmm. and every part of the world is importing from china now when you import from china your economy is being extracted by china okay they mm -hmm. get your money chinese on the second uh, uh, uh hand chinese also print their own money americans also print their own money when you come to africa we have to wait for someone to come from switzerland and mm. ship the money in a container to come whilst we use cars to go and pick it from harbor and making noise just to go and put it in the bank only to find out that we are purging that money against dollars and then when it runs out we go back begging the world to give us money again before we can survive why are we doing all, all of this when we have reserves of everything that the world needs. The government is refusing to give power to the youth. The youth are the ones with the energy. The youth are the ones that are ready to work. They are the ones that are having lived up to 35, even half, halfway through their, mm. their lifetime. Mm. But these people are being robbed of the All opportunity right. of them working. We'll take everyone. When we come back, we'll show your journey so far. There's a, a video of the, the journey of um, uh, Nana Kwame Bediaku, the new force. We'd, we'd look at that journey. And then he will tell us what else he will do. This is the point of view. We're live. Send us your questions. Stay with us. The mask. A reminder of our shared lineage, a weapon against the darkness of night. War started out as a movement with our brilliant billboard campaign, not only inspired people, but also struck fear in the hearts of people who don't mean well for our country. From people trying to impersonate the person behind the mask, to our billboards being targeted and violently taken down, this is a criminal act. As you can see, this billboard has been vandalized. The faith the people had in our movement was never shaken. Even our spokesperson was kidnapped by authorities. 48 hours is the maximum the person must be released. But you keep the person for seven days for a misdemeanor. 
and the court admits the person to bail and you still want to keep the person. Please. No, is, that, but is that how you do your way? Is that how you do your way? You are saying that the person is saying that the Treated brutally and deported under false pretenses. The human rights violation has become an embarrassment to our country on an international scale. This did not kill our faith in our movement as we believed in our message more than our safety. The convention by the New Africa Foundation, an affiliate of the New Force Movement, where international African leadership heavyweights came to ignite the voices of Africa, was targeted and shut down. So how can you tell us that the power above us is cancelling the program? Who is the power to the The powers above believed it was a means to unveil ourselves. Yet, their plans to stop us ended up making our review more powerful than ever. And when I'm not here also, I want you to remember that I came. And I want my absence to be felt. And for that reason, I know you're looking for the man. But the man in the mask is sitting in front of you. The mask is a representation of what it means to brave the fight against darkness. Embrace the change with resolve and might. Embrace the new force. So that's a quick overview of the man. I have to give it to you. That was amazing. Oh, yeah? Your, your, do I get it? Do, 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 do I get it? No, your media campaign is brilliant. Thank you. Thank 150 you. 150 billboards, 16 regions, high resolution. It must have cost a lot of money. It's not the money. It's the impact. And also... It's not a messenger, it's the message. But this is something that I want Ghanaians to understand, what we're doing. It's not because I want to put money on billboards. I want to make sure that I impact the 16 regions that I'm targeting, okay? I want to be present there. Do you have a political organization on the ground? Do you have like yes. um, foot soldiers, for want of a better word? I have 16 offices in all the regions. Okay, and I with, I, with executives or something yes, like that. Yes, yes. But, but you are not a party, you're going as independent. Yes, but we started by reading the constitution and the requirements of the constitution yeah. said that you should put that. So we have it anyway. And we. No, I'm asking this because you want a social media poll, but there's a view that usually on campaigning is on the ground. So do you have like boots on the ground? Do you have uh, agents in? Because we have in the last election over 42,000 polling stations. Do you have? that inventory? Do you have people on police stations? We don't fully have that yet. Okay. But I think eventually we would um, skillfully acquire that, that sort of um, uh, uh, resources that we need in the political industry. As would you consider joining forces with an existing party to take advantage of their system? So there's P CPP, there's PPP, there's PNC, there's also Alan Chermatin as independent. Would you consider any sort of partnership since you say NDC and PP are the problem no I didn't say NDC and PP are just the problem the government of Ghana is the problem the governance is the poor. governance of the country it, it's, it's poor okay so we like to answer the question you just yeah. asked we haven't made our mind we didn't think of it that oh what we're doing we might merge with someone it's not it, we're new force we're new force as a movement and we're standing for the youth because it is important that Ghana becomes a part of this decision making. But what, what is your ideology? How different is that from, say, the MPP's ideology or the NDC's ideology? What do you describe as the MPP or the NDC's oh, ideology? NDC, MPP is center right, M NDC is center left. So NDC is social democracy. So then I'm so the striker. I'm the striker. No, this is not football. <laughs> well, it's uh, a game, right? You're, to, you're no, talking. You know, in the spectrum of political views, yeah, you say NDC center right. Is a bit on the left, uh -huh. MPP is on the right, generally. Uh -huh. Okay, I'm the one in the middle, and I'm for the neutral people. I am just for the average person. I am not for a particular audience that says, I belong to NDC or I belong to MPP. I am for the people who think that they need a change. So how does that translate, for example, into your policies about imports? Imports. What's your view on imports? Imports should stop. We should cut it. We have 92% importation. Do you know what that is? Imports should, what, import of what? Importation stop. in general. Of everything? Of everything. 
course, you should try and bring it to at least 25% to 40%. You have 92%. You know what that is, Ben? When you are importing 92% of your goods from other parts, you're carrying all your economy, your money, so, everything. So which products should uh, start? I, I like, should we start you know, I'd like to answer your question first. Yeah. You're carrying everything in the country. Yeah. You go and give it to a manufacturer and take the goods that they've manufactured in products, bring it to Ghana. When you get here, the government will tax you to bring the goods into the country. Then you, you are forced to sell it 10 times to your people. So basically, that's how you make your profit. And when you make the profit, you do the same thing. So, yeah, I know. So I'm saying, what, what products do you think we should stop importing? Well, I just don't think a particular product should be stopped by importing them, I just think that we should just build our own industrial platforms. So we just where produce we the start, things. Where do we start from? Which, one, which product do we start from? We can start from anything. We have oil, we have gas. We don't even refine our own oil. We have Tema oil refinery, but you probably have 40,000 barrels and the country needs maybe 500,000 barrels a day. Okay, so now you have to import oil. But the actual oil is from you. Somebody have to take it outside to go and refine it. And then you go back and buy it times 10. It's the same thing with gold. It's the same thing with everything we do. You have aluminum. We have bauxite. But the Chinese people are pulling it. They take it to China. And then they go and manufacture it into aluminum. Then we go and take it again and bring it and pay taxes over. So how do you... I, I, just want to understand, I understand the concept you're making. Mm -hmm. And I agree with you. I just want to know. So how do you, for example, hope to add value to gold in Ghana? How are you going to do it? Well, not just gold. But I think that we should have the power of exportation. Why countries cannot come also to buy from us? Do you know how much money we'll be making? No, we all agree. But the question is the how. We all, what you are saying, we all agree that we have to add. Okay. How, do, how do you add value to gold? Gold. Okay, so first of all, the gold that you keep in your reserves determine the value of your currency. When you look at the Bank of Ghana, mm. just maybe last year, they had around 6.9 or 7.4 tons. Mm. The value of 7.4 tons is about half a billion. Now, when you have gold, you can almost borrow times two the reserves that you have. So Ghana has been borrowing money under a billion in the past 10 years because of our reserves. But then when you look at companies like maybe Ashanti Goldfields or Newmont, they have actually declared that they have exported, they have moved over 180 tons of gold from this country. But we, the people that own the gold, don't have that in our reserves. Now, you know what will happen if we only had 180 tons gold in our central bank? We can go out there and borrow mm. 34 billion. One go. Not go and beg for 3 billion so and how, they give us 600. Are you, how, you're still talking about the what? I want to know. Well, so are you going to set up a refinery? Well, I'm just telling you that if we, the government or the private sector, is the one that is mining that gold and keeping it as a reserves of the country, like American does, like the French people are doing, like the Europeans are doing, we will have the cost. We will have all of these reserves. When you go to Qatar, Qatarians have bought a lot of gold, and it's in their reserves. And they borrowed $202 billion just for the World Cup. They obviously used it to build their whole country. But the reserves that they had gave them the capacity to borrow the money. So I why see. do we have mm. gold, and then we give it to people, we sell it to people, they take it, and mm. they give us cities. And what what, what did you do about corruption? No, please. You, you, if I, I explain I, the goal, if I explain the goal, we have just two minutes. What did you do about corruption? Corruption? What's your, what, how do you tackle corruption? I think corruption is very simple. You don't have to attack it. You know, the reason why people are corrupt is because they've stripped every value from them. Mm -hmm. You're talking about a soldier man that gets 2,000 cities or 3,000 cities. They have a wife, they have four children. And then the fees in the country is costing them maybe 5,000 to pay for their children's fees. The transportation is costing mm -hmm. them another 2,000. The guy only gets 3,000 from you. You know, this guy, if you, even if you give them pure water for bribe, they will take it. So that's low level. What about the high level? That what is about, what, what, no, no, no. Wait, wait. That is why we're talking about the middle income nation once you're able to build a middle income you will give a total value to the nation are you saying this that poor pay is a justification for corruption is that what you're partly, saying partly but most of most if that was true then the, only the poor will be corrupt no, 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 no. the most, wealthy also corrupt so what most, are you saying? Of, most of our politicians that you call corrupt po politicians are people who went into the political industry broke they just that is something and they went you have people who so, are so are you saying that their brokerage is what is making them corrupt but of course i mean if you go to england the policeman that is arresting people on the street, they have access to have a mortgage, they have access to have um, um, uh, the have own of, car. Have you, have you heard of Bernard Madoff? 
No, please. But I I'm sure he was one of the wealthiest Americans. Uh -huh. He was involved in the biggest scandal. He was very corrupt. He was one of the wealthiest one percent of Americans. So I don't know. You, you always have to start from the scratch. Like you're talking attack. about poor people and the fact that they don't have good I, I, income. No, it's not just poor right. people. It's value. I'm not saying poor people. When you take value from people, yeah. you force them to do the wrong things to feed the loss of the lack of valuation that has been stripped of them. But you can check this analysis. And when you go outside, the people really respect their jobs. Eh? To be a teacher, it's like a middle income person. In Ghana, to be a teacher, you can be six months without being paid. And you don't even know how to survive. This will definitely let you have a corrupt, not only country, but a continent. And so, people will come to extract whatever they want from the so country. So on December 7th this year, we'll see you on the ballot. Well. We'll see you on the ballot. Well, you don't want to see me? Do no, you want I'm to see me? I'm sure you will see me. Okay, you will see me, but let me ask you a question. Yeah. If you saw me on the ballot on December 7th, would you vote for me? Because I want to know where your mind is. I want to know if yeah, you're still uh, if, if believing I'll, in I'll, MPP I'll or I'll, NDC. I'll bring, or you back, I'll bring you back to, to be sure if I agree with all your policies. Now I'm not sure yet. Okay, fine. I'm I not think, sure yet. I think that maybe... I'll give you another chance. Well, it's not, you're not giving me a chance, actually. I thought you me. Ah, no. So me. Well, with time, I think so, because, yeah. you know, I couldn't explain everything over hour. here. Uh, we just had an hour. But for me, I strongly believe that Ghana as a country, we definitely need to become responsible for our own decisions based on who we're choosing to lead us. There's no point choosing a leader mm. who will All lead right. you for eight years, right. and then you don't get anything out of them based on their own own governance or their their manifesto mm. that promised you jobs and all of this if it doesn't come Nana, for four decades thank you thank you for your courage in standing up to to lead and in throwing your hat in the ring i respect that a lot thank you very much i appreciate you for that Nana Kwame Bediako, freedom jacob caesar cheddar he's gunning for the presidency on december 7 2024 hopefully he'll come again we'll talk more about his policies thank you for watching a live edition of the city point of view. We'll see you, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.